My name is Daniel Guise. I'm the creative and technical director at ED Films, and today I'm going to give you a quick look into my modeling process for the characters of our latest film project that is currently in production. Each of these characters is designed in a way that you could actually print it out and assemble the puppet in real life. And that was really important to the aesthetic of the project in that it felt like something that was tactile and handmade. This Raven's wings are built to accordion, just like paper, and I actually built a, a prototype to try to see how the wings could actually work. This character here is the closest to being a finished version of what the final design will be, and I have actually assembled a paper model of her for reference on design, lighting, and materials. So instead of just focusing on one model, what I thought I'd do is we would take a look at a few different models, and I'll show you some of the techniques that I use to achieve this aesthetic. So the first step here is to create a base mesh that you can use to build the paper model on top of. And for that, I used Make Human, which is an open source humanoid character modeling package. It really gives you a lot of options to customize the characters. So it gave me a really good starting point for things. So I didn't have to model it by hand to begin with. From there, what I do is I make the surface live and I use the quad draw tool to start generating a mesh on top of that surface that conforms to the style of the characters, which they are meant to be made of paper so there's a lot of thought and mechanics and rules that have to go into how you construct a paper character that can actually be puppeteered or animated. My main rule of thumb is if it's visible skin, then I would typically use this method because it needed to conform to some kind of anatomical structure. Additionally, for things like the faces or for unique things like feet and beaks and stuff, I would build a really simple base mesh and then use the quad draw tool on top of it to create a mesh with proper edge loops. For the character's body, clothes, and other things like that, I usually tried to stick to cylinders and shapes that would be easy to make using paper. If you want to create really complex, deformed surfaces, you need a lot of pieces and cuts to make that happen. Underneath all of the characters is an actual functioning armature that is made out of paper. And I came up with this design and structure based on my research as I tried to build real paper puppets. These long strips actually allow mobility and give the feeling of a three-dimensional joint while not causing buckling or bending in weird ways. So once the primary structures are finished, my next step is to go in and start adding detailing and a few more complex forms. And I'll do this by extruding and actually cutting edges by detaching them. So I'll select a row of edges and detach them. And then I can select the vertices on those edges and average them out. And that'll create a natural spacing between them. So you can see that's how I'm actually doing these feathers. And I do that on everything all over the body. And adding these cuts actually allow you to create realistically more complex curves in the paper surface. So you can get a lot more interesting details and forms, and this helps to create a more interesting silhouette for the character. One of the problems I ran into with the character's designs is because of the time period, a lot of the people were wearing long gowns and dresses, and it wasn't really easy to make these using a whole bunch of cylinders and cone shapes. So I couldn't actually get the characters to bend or move the way I wanted to. So I figured out one way that I could create dress-like materials was to actually cut fine slits into the paper and then run a cloth simulation on it. This kind of mimics what would happen if you wanted to create a curved surface like these sleeves. You'd have to create it out of a whole bunch of different strips. And doing this manually is really difficult. So once the cloth simulation is run, you're happy with the look, you just duplicate the mesh and position it the way you want. One problem I ran into a few times is when I created a transform constraint on some vertices, as soon as I tried to move it during a real-time simulation, it would collapse. And you actually have to change this in your animation settings under the evaluation mode. If you set it to DG, it seems to work. I also used a lot of cloth for other parts that weren't just the strips. So I took interesting shapes and I would cut them out and then I would drop them on a character to get the folds the way I wanted. This helped create some unpredictability. And as soon as it was done, just duplicate the mesh. And also for the hair, I just would take spheres and run slits in them, create a transform constraint, run a simulation and inflate, and then just rotate things. Additionally, there's a lot of other details to put inside the characters, and that includes the paper tabs, supporting structures, and you really have to keep in mind the behavior of paper and how it would actually work. And this has come with a lot of experimentation. So as you can see, there is quite a bit of detail and thought that goes into the structure and building of these characters, but overall, I think they're quite simple, and the animation can get away with being relatively basic, and because of the complexity of the structures and the design, I think visually we forgive it and that actually allows it to have a naivety and a simplicity to it. And yet there's something underlying that kind of brings it to life in a new and different way.